So the most common conditions that can lead to heart failure are exactly the same as those that can lead to heart disease, which would be increased cholesterol, hypertension, diabetes, being overweight. These are the most common conditions. But there are less common conditions, uh, for example, abnormal heart rhythms, called arrhythmias. You can have infiltrative diseases, something called sarcoidosis or amyloidosis. Also, some people are prone to them based on genetics. There's genetic cardiomyopathies, and some people have heart failure after giving birth. It's called postpartum cardiomyopathy. And then there's a whole branch of cardiology now being developed called cardio-oncology because the oncology drugs and oncology treatments that cancer patients go through ultimately can impact the heart, including radiation around the heart. It can make it more stiff and less able to function normally. Also, the chemotherapy drugs can cause arrhythmias and abnormal heart squeeze of the heart. So these are all things that potentially can lead to heart failure. Simply put, diet and exercise, these are things that all physicians tend to talk with their patients about, but it's so important. You know, our bodies are our machines. You know, the better we treat it, the better output we'll get. The longer we'll live, the less disease we will have. Um, and in terms of exercise, we want to avoid obesity, we want to avoid hypertension, we want to avoid diabetes. Those are all risk factors that can lead to heart disease, that can lead to heart failure. And so diet and exercise are cornerstones of prevention of disease. So ultimately what I tell everybody is just at the end of the day, make sure you get to a cardiologist at least once a year or get an EKG once a year. Just see how your heart's doing so that if something is wrong, if there's an arrhythmia, for example, which is an abnormal heartbeat, that that can be treated early before we get into the heart failure stages.